Okay, so we now have this uh, ball with uh, three coloured panels on it and I'll just rewind and play through so that we can have a look at it. So you can see that we have this sort of uh, red panel, a blue panel and a green panel. Uh, now um, I want this to look sort of like a beach ball uh, so I'd like there to be like six panels instead of three. So in order to do that I'll just bring back the hyper shade uh, select the ball material and uh, show input and output connections. I'm just going to select this uh, place 2D texture node. Uh, I actually don't need to go to the um, attribute editor, I can um, change it right here. Uh, with the repeat V, I'm just going to set that to 2. And you can see that now we have twice as many um, in this horizontal as we uh, had before. And so now if we look at our ball, we have these uh, six panels around the ball, making it look like a beach ball. And if we rewind and play, we can get a lot better um, representation of the rotation of our ball in the scene like that. Uh, okay, so we have our ball, we have a material on it, and we have uh, geometry. Now, um, uh, we'll be able to apply a, a special material to this geometry called the Use Background um, Material, and uh, that will mean that we will um, we will be able to cast shadows on this material, and render out those shadows so that we can uh, superimpose those onto our background footage and make it look like we are actually casting shadows uh, onto. Uh, the architecture in our scene. Um, so, how do we work out the lighting? Uh, well, this um, this scene, this uh, footage that uh, I shot, is probably um, really bad for um, duplicating the lighting in this scene. And the reason for that is that we have this sort of uh, shadowing here, this um, uh, which looks like it's it's foliage from a tree, which is over on the over on that side, um, off camera, uh, which is going to be very very difficult to duplicate, and it's probably going to be beyond the scope of this sort of tutorial. Um, so we won't worry about that. But what I can show you is um, how to duplicate uh, the sunlight in a scene, how to determine uh, which angle the sun is um, uh, uh, which angle the sun is in comparison or in relation to the geometry in our scene because we have this this sort of um, area of sunlight down here uh, we can use the information in this area to um, to work out uh, the direction that the sun is at in the sky and the way that we can do that is uh, by going from this corner to this corner. Uh, the reason why uh, this corner to this corner works is because um, uh, this shadow uh, up the top of this column and uh, up the top of this door uh, is from a roof above this uh, this area here. And uh, this, uh, this shadow here on the door is actually um, this column's shadow and uh, based on the way that uh, light is, is traveling in parallel, uh, we know that the light that is here at this corner of this patch of sunlight um, is, the, uh, is the light rays that were parallel and almost exactly in the same place as the light here. Um, I'm not sure if I explained that um, very convincingly, but uh, yeah, the, the light here is almost exactly the same as the light here. This, this, um, uh, the measurement from this corner to this corner um, is uh, actually going to be the direction uh, that our sun is casting rays um, on our scene. So how do we um, determine where these points are in our three-dimensional scene? Well, I'm going to map these out with um, a couple of locators. So I'm just going to go to Create 
locator and I'm just going to hit the W key uh, just make sure that we're in this scene uh, the W key and uh, here's our locator here it's a bit hard to see so I'm just going to scale this up to about 50 times and uh, I'm just going to um, uh, take this background geometry that we have and I'm going to switch it from template to reference uh, so I um, I can't select it but I can interact with it with it now and it does show up um, and render in our scene uh, so uh, I'm also going to go to wireframe view now I'll click on the x-axis um, so that we'll only move in that axis and holding down C on the keyboard uh, I'm going to curve snap uh, just to this edge of this column here and so now uh, this locator uh, is um, at the same point in space as the faces on these these columns these front faces here now if we move this back uh, it looks like it's um, it's still too far out but that's just because our origin point is actually lower than our ground plane uh, so if I move this along and I'll just move this to here and move it up a bit and if we come up to our persp camera, our perspective camera and zoom in you can see that we are in fact right on the um, that face of that column there so I'll just go back to the RZ camera and I'm just going to move this locator in Z until we line up with the edge of this column here, this, this patch of sunlight. And I'm going to move it up in Y so that it is just at the top there, so it's right on that corner. I'll then duplicate this locator and I'll just move this over here, move it down a bit. Uh, now I need this locator uh, to be flush with this wall here so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on the x-axis again holding down C I'm going to um, uh, middle mouse hover around this um, area here, this curve on the wall which uh, will put it in the um, in the same space in the x-axis as this door here and like I did with this column I'm just going to bring this back so that it's level with the edge of this patch of sunlight just going to bring it up so that it's right on that corner and so there we go there are our points uh, now how do we make um, a directional light that has the same angle as the line from this point to this point uh, which is going to be the same as the uh, angle of the sunlight in our scene well, it's actually, uh, it's actually quite simple. Uh, under the uh, Rendering tab, or if you wanted to, you could come up to the Create menu. Uh, I'm just going to create a directional light. And there we have it there. Uh, now, I'm just going to hold down the V key, and I'm just going to middle mouse um, hover around on this locator here. Uh, now, we still have um, that axis selected. So I'll just uh, move it around a, a little bit just so that we, uh, we free up that axis. And again, I'm going to hold down V and just snap it to that point there. Now again, because we're using centimeters, um, our actual light is very small. Uh, so I'm just going to scale the, um, the actual representation of this light up a bit. This doesn't change the um, the actual um, intensity or the or the um, uh, the shape of this light at all. It's it's only for this this little section here. Uh, so now we have the light snapped to this locator. Well, uh, how do we get this light to point at this locator? Well, if we wanted to, we could go to um, our uh, animation. Um, menu, go to constrain 
and an aim constraint. We could aim constraint this light to that locator. But uh, a much simpler way is we, if we just click on this button here, which is the Show Manipulator tool. And clicking on that, uh, we have um, we have two little translation widgets instead of one. Now the reason for that is that uh, we have one for the actual origin or the or the uh, the um, the the central point of our light uh, and w the pivot point. That's what I was looking for, uh, and we have another which is the actual aim at target for our directional light. And this comes in very handy. So I'm just going to click on that second locator and uh, with that second locator for the for the point uh, for the aim um, locator uh, again I'm just going to hold down V and I'm going to uh, middle mouse um, wiggle the mouse around on this locator and there we go and that's it that's all we have to do to uh, get a directional light in our scene pointing in the same direction as our sun. Uh, now, you will probably just have to take my word for it because there's not really much that we can render in our scene. Well, uh, in fact, if we uh, go back to our shaded view and we'll come up to um, to our lighting and we'll also tap on 7 so that we are actually lighting um, we are using all lights which means that we're now using that directional light in our scene. Uh, the other thing I want to check is the shadows tab. Now nothing has happened um, that's because over here in directional light we actually need to tell this light uh, to use shadows and so we just click on this I use depth map shadows I'm just going to put a 1 in here and so now we are casting shadows now we don't have a roof on this scene and even if we did we'd have to place it um, in order to be in the right place but if I just hide the, um, the geometry for a second I want you to have a look at this section right here now, um, even though there is sort of uh, shadows being cast by this foliage, you can see the sunlight here just sort of sneaking through, but this column is um, is casting a shadow here on this on this section. Uh, so um, we won't have a shadow for the roof, but the shadow for this column should be running along the same. Um, exact parallel line as or vertical line as this shadow here. So just have a look at this section when I switch the geometry back on. You can see that that shadow is in the is in the same place. It's it's um, it's stretching out from this column the same distance. And that's because this uh, this light here um, in rotated in the y-axis um, at least is exactly along uh, along the same um, direction as our sunlight is shining on our background footage. And if we um, if we actually rendered this scene, uh, we would be able to see the shadow here in the middle of this column is coming from uh, this post this this uh, pole right here. Now we can't uh, see that in our, you know, very basic um, shading uh, in the viewport, but we can see a shadow coming along here, which uh, goes from the bottom of this this shadow in this column to the bottom of this uh, this pillar here, and that's the that's the shadow that's that this pillar is casting. And if you look along here, when I switch the geometry back on that shadow is indeed running there along that ground there. Which means that we now have our sunlight pointing in more or less the same direction. Which means that if our scene was lit entirely by sunlight and our footage didn't have this sort of shadowing here, we would be able to cast shadows 
of objects moving. And using the Use Background Shader, we'd be able to superimpose those shadows onto our background. 